Networking and marketing made simple is for you, the business owner who has a product, a service, or a message that you believe in. My name is Scott Aaron, and each week we'll take a behind the scenes look into the real world marketing and networking tactics and strategies for getting what you have in front of you to a lot more people. Thanks for spending time with me. And now let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another podcast episode. This is uh, another special episode because someone's joining me today. Hello, hello. Hey, Nancy. (laughs) So uh, my wife is joining me today. We're doing another dual episode as we do every so often. And, uh, you know, this past weekend, we were on one of our, um, I would say every three month, every two month weekend getaway, went to our favorite spot uh, in New Hope for 48 hours of unwinding and uh, unplugging. And, uh, you know, as we always do, whenever we're driving back home from somewhere, we always talk about, you know, what, what is moving us lately? You know, what do we see out there in the entrepreneur ethos or what? Uh, bottlenecks or problems that that people have, uh, you know, w- what is bubbling to the surface. And, you know, for the past, I would say three plus years, something that that still remains, I would say a bottleneck or uh, a thorn in a lot of entrepreneurs sides is content creation. You know, there are some people that that totally get it. They know exactly what kind of content they should create because they understand their target audience. They have a favorite methodology of creating content, whether it's blogging their content, videoing their content, podcasting their content, uh, or just posting their content, but also the the routine around that. You know, how how routine are they in being visible on social media? So what Nancy and I wanted to do uh, is jump in today and, and talk about, you know, the three simplistic things that we can all do to become more consistent on social media and more visible with our content. And just a a, a quick plug and reminder uh, that starting tonight, February 27th, uh, we're beginning our our, our first free workshop of the year. This is our Simple Content Creation and Repurposing Workshop. It's completely free. It's from tonight, Monday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time through Thursday. Uh, still 8 to 9 p.m. EST. It's live and recorded. So if you can't attend live because of a different time zone that you're in, different part of the world, you can watch the replays until this Sunday, uh, which I believe is March 5th. So uh, there's going to be a link in the description of this episode for you to go and register. You get a workbook. You get to spend some time with myself and Nancy. Um, We have close to 350 people registered for this event, which we're really, really excited about. Um, So definitely check it out if that's of interest to you. So let's dive into today's episode. So the first key, I would say, in making the process of creating content for you easy and simplified is understanding your niche audience. So Nancy, let's, let's dive into that. Why don't you explain to the audience a little bit about not only what a niche audience is, but how can one define Uh, what their own niche audience should be. Yeah. I mean, well, first off, a niche, right, is a segment of a market. You know, if we're looking at the market as a whole, it's a way to really kind of dig down and help a certain segment of the market. And there's lots of different ways that you can niche down, right? You know, it doesn't have to be just about demographics and, you know, where you live and your location and your profession. Uh, It can also be around psychographics as well. You know, so people who like certain things or have certain core values or, you know, it kind of goes a little bit deeper than that. So there are a lot of different niches that you can dig into. Uh, But what I always tell people, it's still better to niche than not to niche, you know, whenever we're starting this process. And I also tell people who are stuck and frustrated and not moving forward with choosing a niche, at least start somewhere right? You know, look at the market segment or, you know, look at the market as a whole and, you know, start to work your way down one level at a time. You know, if you can start to dig a little bit deeper, you know, so I know over the years, you know, even my agency, we've changed, you know, who we serve several times and that's absolutely fine. Uh, But when you're able to choose a niche within a market, it makes it so much easier for you to create content 
that really resonates with, you know, the audience that you're attracting. Uh, it really helps with so many different things. It helps you to be less scattered, right? You know, I can't tell you how many entrepreneurs and people who I talk to who are just getting started online and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so frustrated and overwhelmed and confused because I'm posting all these things and I don't know what to post and what not to post. And so it's really important that we do niche down and, you know, think about the people that we are trying to attract within our business. You know, who are the people that you want to work with? Uh, you know, <laughs> what is that niche of the market that you really want to attract? You know, the, the there's two things that always come to mind for me. Number one, it's what Seth Godin says is that you never want to market to people. You want to market with people. And, and that's what you need to envision. So if you have a product, if you have a good, if you have a service, a coaching program, maybe you run your own group mastermind like Nancy and I do, you know, who is that person from a, a professional standpoint or an industry standpoint that you're marketing with? You know, they're, they're sitting right alongside of you. So they're going to completely understand, you know, your message. They're going to understand some of the, the key things that you're pointing out, maybe um, in, in a tip value added piece of content. The other thing that comes to mind is really understanding not only as far as who you're marketing with, but who you best serve. And something that Nancy and I always talk about, and we go over this in our workshop, is that you don't want to work with everybody. I think that's the mistake that, that that people make. They 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 have this giving heart, which we all do. And I want to serve and I want to help everyone. I can help everyone. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, to a certain extent, maybe you can help everyone, but the people that you want to help are the ones that are going to get the best results. And Nancy and I talk about this all the time. Your best source of revenue for your business is referrals from people that you've worked with. Because again, you can spend all the money you want on Facebook and Instagram ads. You can spend, you know, all the time doing workshops. The 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 most fruitful and monetized aspect of of your marketing is actually getting referrals from people that you've gotten results for. So that's why you want to be really clear with your niche because the more people that you work with that are the right fit for what you offer, the better results they're going to get. So niche down. And again, uh, as Nancy alluded to, you know, her demographic, her niche market has shifted over the last number of years, as has mine. And that is completely normal. Who you want to serve right now may be completely different from who you may want to serve 12, 24, 36 months from now. So the first tip is to make sure you identify your niche. Number two is understanding the different types of pillar content and which one is most easy and streamlined for you to create so you can actually be consistent on social media. So Nancy, let's dive into pillar content because a lot of people... Uh, just see content as content. They don't know that there's different forms of pillar content, as we kind of alluded to in the, the beginning of this episode. So talk a little bit more about what is pillar content and why is it so important when someone is you know, not only building their business online, but how can that help them create consistent content? Yeah. So pillar content, and you can also call it, you know, you can swap that term out for long form content. You know, we use it in the same context. Uh, but pillar content gives you the ability to create, like Scott said, right, that longer form type of content that you're able to do so many other things with, okay? And I absolutely love it. I talk about it all day long. And the reason why I do is because when you take the time to write longer form content, and what I mean by that is maybe doing a, a video, walking through steps and three tips, how to whatever, you know, uh, if you're writing a blog or an article, right, this could be three to five paragraphs or more, right? You know, in fact, we were just talking about this. Um, what was it? Social media examiner, right? Requires at least it's how like many? like 3,000 words, which ends up being uh, in in written form about yeah. a, a ten to twelve minute read, so it, yeah. it's it's so, juicy. It's juicy. yeah. So I mean, really, there's a wide range there. But here's my my whole point is is by you as the expert 
taking the time, number one, to niche down, get clear on what your audience needs. You know, you start to dig down and, you know, I always say, just make sure it's very clear on the things that you want to start talking about and help with. Uh, and then boom, when you start creating this longer form pillar content each week, uh, it provides so much amazingness. And okay, I'm going to break down a few different things that you can do with it. So number one, let's say, right, so I'm someone who actually likes to write articles and blog posts. Um, I completely, right, so I just recently released a book, my first book. Uh, those were all blogs and articles and podcast episodes that I did prior. In fact, you know, last year, my season two of my podcast episode, that was all my book, right? Because as I was writing the chapters, right, I was explaining what is a personal brand and why you should have a personal brand and tips to build your personal brand. And again, I was targeting coaches and consultants. And so my book was be was able, right? You know, I did some reformatting. I tweaked some things. I added some extra judge, right? And I was able to publish that as my book. Okay. And it's great information. It gives so much value. And it's also content that I was able to use in my weekly content that I post across all my different social media platforms. So one of the benefits is, is the ability to repurpose that content into other things, because this is you being the expert, the thought leader, the, you know, it, this is your intellectual property, right? That you can do so many things with. So I highly recommend taking the time to at least think about writing one pillar piece of content or long form content, right? You know, that breaks down to four a month. <laughs> okay. You can even batch if you'd like, which is sit down and do them all at once. But I challenge you to do that because once you get going and you get on this content creation machine and you start to just pump this stuff out, now you have, okay, again, using the example of an article, you now have a script that you can basically use to do a video, to do a podcast episode, to also put into a book, and to break apart into different pieces of content. So you can do so many things with it. And then step two is you can repurpose that till the cows come home. Okay. So let's say you did a really cool week and you broke apart, um, you know, all about, and, and this is what I did one time, you know, I did a whole entire week helping people uh, communicate what they did in a nice and clear way, right? It was the whole week where we talked about, you know, having a nice, clean, clean crisp business statement. People loved that episode and people love that content. And so I recognized that whenever I was reviewing, you know, each month, you know, my top performing content. And I took that week and I just repurposed it and re-released it again, you know, a few months later. So it really helps you. Yes. Okay. In the beginning, it might seem a little arduous, right? It might seem a little bit uphill because you're kind of starting and you're writing things from scratch. Uh, but as you get moving and grooving and as you start to write these things, it's going to do so much for you. And the other thing that I wanted to tack on, this is like three, you know, the benefits of writing your own, uh, you know, intellectual property is number three, it will tighten up your expertise. Okay. In fact, I can't tell you how much research I did just by writing some of the articles that I've done that really has made me a better expert when it comes to personal branding, just by spending the time to write those articles. You know, it's kept me sharp. You know, Scott and I talk about it all the time and we say, you know, where can we go to get the most updated information? And, you know, we find our sources, we dig into people, you know, we follow companies and we're trying to be, you know, always on the cutting edge of the new and, you know, exciting things when it comes to the industry and the niche that we're in. So it can just do so many things for you, uh, whenever it comes to creating that pillar content. And, you know, Scott, you mentioned the three different types, right? So if you want to share like the three different types um, that you can do. Um, there are different ways that you can do this. Yeah. So a, a lot of people start um, at a different place. For me, I started, um, I, I oh God, back in 2013. So uh, 10 years ago with video content, that that was my, that's where I felt most comfortable. Um, I wasn't yet really ready to, to write long form uh, articles or blogs. I didn't even think about doing a podcast at that point. You know, I had heard about podcasts, but never thought of doing one. So I was most comfortable starting with video content. And, you know, what I just mentioned, those are the three basic types. There are people that uh, video create their their content. There are people that blog their content. So long form written content, and that could be a newsletter edition or an article on LinkedIn. It could be a blog on your website if you have one, because there's a lot of people that say, well, Scott, I don't, 
I don't have a website to write a blog. And that's where Nancy and I always suggest, well, start a newsletter on LinkedIn. If, if you have creator mode turned on, you have the ability to do so. And then there's a lot of people that actually will podcast their content, meaning you know what Nancy and I are doing right now. We create video podcasts, we create audio podcasts, and we even transcribe our podcasts into written form so we can actually create a blog or a newsletter edition. So the suggestion that I always have for people is pick one. You know, pick where you're most comfortable. Are you comfortable showing up on camera? Then if you are, start with video uh, content. If you're not comfortable showing up on camera, but you are comfortable, uh, you know, doing more audio based content, start with a podcast. But if you're not, you know, comfortable showing up audio wise, showing up video wise, and you are much more comfortable, you know, being, you know, behind the keyboard, just punching away and, and, you know, writing out your content that way, then I would start with some long form content, whether it be LinkedIn articles or newsletter editions or a blog. But here's the cool thing. No matter what piece of pillar content you choose as your go-to, it can be repurposed into the other two. Meaning, if you start with a video piece of content, that could be obviously taken and converted into audio only for a podcast. Or that podcast or that video can then be transcribed into a long form written blog or newsletter edition. And they're all interchangeable. So say you start with a podcast that can be turned into a video and that also can be transcribed and turned into a newsletter or blog. If you start with a <laughs> blog, that blog, as Nancy alluded to, can become your script for a podcast episode and a video training. So they're all interchangeable, but you got to pick one. So number one, identifying your niche, figuring out that audience. Number two, choosing your avenue, your path, of what pillar piece of content you want to create. And that's step number two. And step number three, once you've identified your niche and once you've chosen the path you want to go down of the type of pillar content you want to create, the third thing is creating a content posting schedule. Meaning, what is your frequency? How often are you going to be showing up on social media posting your content? And this is key. You know, you can identify your niche. You can... Uh, identify and clearly state, this is the type of content that I'm going to create. But once you have all that figured out, you have to decide what your content posting schedule is. So Nancy, why is it important once someone identifies their niche, they choose their pillar content that they want to create and that, that path they want to go down? Why is it so important to then, you know, put that all together, put a, a nice little bow on it, you know, put the cherry on top, and why is it so important for people to now create that content posting schedule? Oh, so you're not flying by the seat of your pants. <laughs> um, you know, we want to have structure as much as possible. In fact, guys, you know, the way that you scale your business and the way that you're able to build off of successes and make it better and better and better is if we create systems in our business, right? We don't want to just create, you know, something uh, each week and fly by the seat of our pants. We actually want to create a system. So creating a schedule and actually mapping out what you want your frequency to be is incredibly important. And I love that Scott and a lot that he teaches, especially with LinkedIn, uh, we can start with just a few posts a week, right? We don't have to you know, <laughs> post like two times a day, you know, every few hours or anything like that. We don't need to do that. And in fact, you know, with LinkedIn, I know a recommendation that he usually gives is, you know, posting like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, right? You've got good content going out there. Um, you know, you're showing up for your audience and you're not overwhelming yourself, right? We can all start with just the basic three, which could be, right? If you did a little breakdown, could be a video, right? You could jump on for th like three to five minutes uh, and talk about something. Could be like, hey, three tips, how to build your personal brand. And then you can post uh, a longer form. Uh, you know, post, which could be an article or a newsletter. Again, just like Scott mentioned, it could be the transcription of your video. People digest content in different forms. Uh, and I always get that question where it's like, well, what if you post the same exact thing? People are not like still people are not going to see it, right? There, you would be so surprised and shocked at the amount of people who actually come across and even see your content. 
Um, you don't need to worry about posting, you know, the same thing or a similar thing, uh, you know, in your newsletters, you post on your video. It's just the nature of the beast. And even from a marketing standpoint, it's just more touch points on a certain topic. In fact, you could talk about the same topic for 30 days straight. <laughs> People still, there's still going to be people who are like, oh, I didn't know, you know, or I didn't see that. Trust me. Uh, you know, anyway. So, you know, Wednesday, like I said, could be that long form. And then Friday, maybe you throw out a poll, you know, on LinkedIn, uh, asking a question like, hey, you know, how, what are the frustrations you have when it comes to building your personal brand? It could be something related to your topic. So that's easy enough, right? You know, if you're listening now and you're like, ah, this still seems so overwhelming. Okay. If I were to literally go through this work threat workflow um, and explain how this is built out, it's okay, we're going to commit to one, right? Doing that one piece of pillar content. Just as Scott mentioned, video is good for him. Okay. I love to write because I kind of, that's how my brain works. I like to write it out, kind of, you know, digest it a little bit, and then I can shoot the video on the content. Um, but if you're like Scott, you could shoot a two to five minute video uh, on a specific topic. You can then, you know, transcribe it using a program like otter.ai. Uh, in fact, heck, let's throw in another tool that you can use, right? Chat GPT. I know it's all the rage right now. People are talking about using it. You could throw the rough transcription from otter.ai and ask it to reformat it into an engaging blog post. It's your information. It's just going to kind of make it look a little nicer. So you can there, right? Go ahead and do your newsletter. And then you can even in Chat GPT, right? Now come up with a, a poll question that relates to the topic from the article and it'll give you a poll question and you can even ask it to give you some answers as well. So there is a lot of different stuff that you can do, but even starting there, starting something as simple as that. Um, in fact, that routine is what I would recommend all day long for anyone who is, you know, a personal brand looking to build, you know, their brand online, you know, it, an attorney, a consultant, a financial advisor, you know, health insurance broker, people who are really looking to, again, put themselves out there. Just starting there is, is great. You know, creating that, that system or that flow creates consistency. And Nancy and I always talk about something called the compound effect. And that's doing small incremental things each and every day that lead to a greater result at the end. So people ask us all the time, well, you know, how, how are you guys so consistent? How, how do you keep showing up? And, and, and these three things that we went over today, in, in our honest opinion, will help you grow and monetize your business. Because when you can identify that target niche, when you can understand that you do need to start with a form of pillar content, not all the forms of pillar content. We're not saying, hey, you got to do a video, a podcast, and a blog every single week. No, we want you to create one that can be repurposed into multiple pieces, but also creating that content posting schedule. It just, it takes the ease and, 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 and it takes the pain away and it allows you to be more free flowing. So we want all of you to succeed. Nancy, you want to say something? Yeah, I was going to say too, I also get the question, well, you know, what is the best way to organize all this or how can I kind of <laughs> get it out of here, you know, in my brain and get it, you know, somewhere where I can actually take a look and kind of map things out. And I, there are a few tools that I do recommend, uh, you know, I use personally, again, you guys could use some other form because there's lots of different ways that you can do it. Uh, but even just starting basically and probably with the smallest learning curve, I love as a project management tool for content, uh, I love to use Trello, right? You know, I love to actually map out all of the weeks. In fact, if you were to imagine a to-do list, right, from top to bottom, every single little list on my Trello board, uh, which is a project management tool, is the every week for the rest of the year, right? So it reads, you know, week four, February, and then it's got, you know, all the different things under that. I always have my topic at the top. You know, what is the main theme of the week? What is it that I'm focusing on? I always have a spot where I actually connect. Um, you know, I use Google Drive to store my, you know, documents, to store my blog posts, to store my videos, all kinds of things like that. So there's a nice organization there. Um, but I always put my Google Drive link and a little spot where I can add graphics, videos, content. Uh, and then I break down my, my days. So it's Monday, you know, with the date, and then I'll put whatever, um, you know, I'm going to be posting that day. I've got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, just like Scott said earlier. And like I mentioned with LinkedIn, you could do Monday. Uh, here's my video, 
you know, uh, Wednesday, here's my article posts. And, you know, Friday, here is my poll question. And just organize and kind of map things out that way. Um, the next tool that we'll be talking about, um, obviously, next week at our workshop. So we obviously um, are in love and we have our own posting platform called BYB Social. Um, but it is a non-negotiable. And guys, I say this up and down. I don't care what platform you're using. Every single person, every entrepreneur, every online business owner needs to have a social media scheduling platform. Do you agree, Scott? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny. I was reading a book the other day to Scott and um, one of the examples, they were actually going over a budget. It was like, oh, how to budget in your business. And I was going through it and they had a spot that was filled in, meaning like, yep, we already did this for you. There's no question. And one of them was a social media scheduling platform. You might have heard of many different ones like Hootsuite, Buffer, um, you know, uh, Sprout Social, uh, you know, Meet Edgar. There's so many out there. Uh, but for the last four plus years, you know, Scott and I have been using BYB Social for our clients uh, and obviously have opened the doors uh, so that other people can use it as well. But it is absolutely a wonderful scheduling tool where I can connect all of my social media platforms. I can schedule out content, heck, for the next three months if I wanted to. Um, I can set up my automated posts. Like, for example, in our Facebook groups, we post the same thing, you know, it's a Monday, you know, Monday, what's your going on for the week? You know, Wednesday, we always post, what do you need? And, you know, Friday, it's the FEF Friday, you know, gratitude post. So we, I literally set up the post and put it on reoccurring for the rest of the year. And I never have to look at it. So it's really neat, all the different things that you can do, but, you know, I highly recommend working smarter and not harder. Uh, so one, you know, whatever works for you, create a system, create a workflow, create a place where you can manage, you know, what your content's going to be. Uh, and then from there, you obviously want to make sure that you have a tool uh, that's going to make things easier where you can literally go on vacation, right? You know, Scott talks about it all the time. You know, a few years ago I had surgery and I was in bed for the entire month. I was not posting on social media, but people didn't know. People are like, oh my God, it's so great to see Nancy posting, but I had scheduled all my content out, you know, before my surgery. So, you know, keep in mind that there are some things that can definitely help this process, um, make it a little bit easier. It does not have to be frustrating, um, but it's all good. Yeah. Well, what's frustrating is when you don't have a system in place and, you know, there's a lot, we, we really highly recommend you come to the workshop because the, the number, oh, yeah. I'm just going to finish with this. The, the number one thing that people say is, oh, you know, don't those scheduling tools diminish your engagement? No, it, it, it that's falsified information. Uh, the, the social media platforms actually support things like BYB Social, Buffer, and Hootsuite because they understand that, that people are busy. Uh, they have other things going on. So they would rather have a tool like the one that we have to allow people to create their content and be present on social media uh, than not at all. So yep. again, those are our three t three tips and three keys uh, of how to be consistent on social media with your content that leads to growth and sales into your business. Again, if you would like to register for our workshop starting tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time running every night, Monday through Thursday, live and recorded. Uh, obviously, there'll be an opportunity also to join our social media posting platform called BYB Social, which Nancy talked about. We would love to have you part of our family. So everyone, please enjoy the rest of your days and we'll talk to you next time. Bye, Bye. everyone. Thank you so much again for checking out today's episode. And if you are listening through iTunes, Spotify, wherever you are, please leave me a rating and review. Let me know what you loved, what you would like to see improved, or ideas you have for future episodes. And if you are interested in taking your business to the next level, don't hesitate to go to my website, www.scotterron.net where you can schedule a free discovery call with me where I can learn more about you, your business, what you're struggling with, and how we can work together. And don't forget to check out my wife, Nancy, and mine, our free community on Facebook called LinkedIn Leads for Life. We would love to see you in there. Have a great rest of your day. And thank you, everyone, for your support. Grateful for each and every one of you.